All right, folks, we got one more video for you. Naptown Tuner coming at you one more time today. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button. Even if you don't watch anything from here on out, that still helps me, so help a brother out. This is an extremely, extremely popular subject. Why? Probably because these things fail right and left. But I got something new for you, stay tuned. This, this is, yeah, this is the water pump. This is a B8 water pump. I've showed you before how they fail. They're plastic. They like to, to bust open like this, right? And not only that, but the gaskets can get brittle and all that kind of stuff. They can also leak right here. They have a coolant temp sensor built into them right here. If you're not careful, you can break this. This is a comparison video though. I've never actually even felt the need to take one of these apart, but today I'm gonna show you the difference between this big behemoth of a water pump that goes on the B9 engine, and this is a B8 or B8.5, right? They're both 2.0 TTFSI engines, but this is the revised, the, the newer style engine. I've got cylinder heads I could show you to compare and all this kind of stuff. But right now I'm just showing you the water pumps. So, first off, they have... Now, if you were to get the newer revised version of this pump from Audi, this flange right here would be aluminum. Just like this one's aluminum. But, you see... This has some kind of crazy servo type deal. It's got like balls and bearings and things that go around in here and it, it does it does some weird regulation. Now we do still have the coolant temp sensor tucked away in here. Are you gonna be able to see it? It's it's tucked in here. Do you, do you see that little thing sticking out in the hole right there? So that's way tucked in there. Let's, let's just... Uh, First, let's take apart this one that most of my people on my channel are familiar with because these are still fairly new, but they did have some issues. They did need some replacing. There's some weird stuff going on with this one too. It's really pretty interesting. Like for instance, I mean, I'm just now noticing there's some weird metal looking stuff inside this hole right here. So let's take this one apart first. So. If you're familiar with Audis at all, you would know like the belt drive pumps look exactly like this on the older engines, the timing belt engines. You would have a timing belt on the front of your engine and you would have a, a pump like this with a plastic impeller on the back side. Well, let's take a look at what the impeller looks like on this one. So, I'm assuming this face of this pump should just come right off. Now, I certainly wouldn't want to service this pump by just replacing this part. No way. Yep, that looks exactly like the 1.8T. On the old 1.8Ts, we would find this plastic impeller would come loose off the shaft, and the engine would overheat, and it would be difficult to find. Let's take a look at this gasket right here. I'm sure that this gasket right here has failed on previous pumps and I didn't pay any mind or attention to it. I just replaced the pump because these pumps are just prone to fail. Now, let's take a look inside here. I might need more light. I'm not getting very good light. But there's a thermostat inside here. So, let's, let's see if this will come off and we'll take a look at the thermostat. I certainly would not suggest replacing the thermos. None of this is serviceable. You just replace the whole pump. I mean, you probably could, but don't do it. So here we have the outlet. Pretty interesting. It just goes all the way through, but there's a little spot right here to hold the thermostat. Oop, that plopped right out. There you go. Here's your little thermostat. Couple rubber stoppers on either side. And that's all there is to it. You just have, you have this coolant temp sensor that, see there? If you're really careful with it, like I say, 
because some water pumps, if you buy the cheapest thing you can get, it won't come with one of these sensors. And if you get one of the cheap, I'm just gonna recommend sticking with this Audi sensor because I've never seen these Audi sensors go bad. But from what I'm told, if you get some of these cheaper pumps and just run the sensor that's in it, it could be troublesome. So if you can, it's a good idea to take this apart carefully without breaking it because this can break very easily. So you might not want to do it with your fingers like I did. You might want to gently get a pick on either side and kind of very lightly pop it out. Because if you get a pump that looks just like this, you know, and there's two different styles of holding this coolant temp sensor in. You might have this right here that is just a plastic clip, and there's another style that actually screws it in. So that's all there is to this pump. I've took it completely apart. Now, let's take apart this fancy schmancy B9 pump. This thing has some stuff going on with it. I mean, it's like three times heavier. I gotta get some different tools too because there's all kinds of different tools, but this is T30 action right here, so I can at least take this off with the current tool in my hand. Uh, there we go. So I just unbolted this flange right here. Now, will I be able to, yep. So let's, let's compare the pumps real quick. Are they the, they look about, this one's slightly bigger, but it's still, it's still looking like the same type of thing. We've still got the same type of veins We've got the same type of belt that drives it. And we've got the same type of plastic. Now this is interesting, I just now noticed this. If you look really close, there's cracks. See that crack right there and that crack right there? And there's a small crack that's developing right here. So this is actually separated. I'm just gonna put more light on. I gotta, I gotta put more light on. You're gonna be able to see it a little bit better now. Some cracks in there developing. But I haven't seen, I haven't seen this come apart like the 1.8 T's yet. All right. So, there you go. There's your B9 pump. What else can we take apart on this thing? thermostat thermostat looks like it's is that what that is so there isn't a traditional thermostat with this one I don't think I think this thermostat is actually this right here it's been a while since I've looked at the SSPs and the service manuals and stuff I I was too busy fixing cars to re really dig into the material so much back in the day I'll just be honest with you If I knew, if I knew that I was going to, now the light's too much. If I knew that I was going to be on YouTube, maybe I would have paid more attention to all the manuals and whatnot. But, whatever. So, let's go ahead and take off. this servo type deal. Actually, let's save that. We're gonna take off this bottom outlet real quick. So, hmm, so this just pops off. It's a little bottom outlet. Now we have a weird springy thing. Weirdo springy thing. It's a slinky. I don't care about this water pump. I got like 
three or four others. And if someone needs one, you can tell me. I might sell it to you. So we've got another springy thing in here. And then, so that's kind of perplexing. There, that must have something to do with, with this, how it opens up and regulates. Let's go ahead and take this little bypass cooler off. This, this is what goes to your engine oil cooler, I believe. So, if you look at that, we got another slinky. A slinky, slinky. All right, there's a hole that goes back in there. All right, I think it's time to take this thing off. This is the fanciest dang old water pump I've ever seen in my life. It must be expensive. Cars nowadays, just getting crazier and crazier. Before you know it, they'll be electric and driving themselves. All right, we missed one. Ooh, we got a motor in here. Would you look at that? A little circuit board in the water pump. We got a circuit board in it. Well, of course, because it, it's got an electrical connector to it. And this little bad boy right here, look at that. So this, this, uh, little, this is what we call this is a worm gear. And that's gonna, that's gonna spin slowly. See this, what I'm doing here is I'm spinning this gear right here. It's spinning the worm gear and then it's moving this big cog gear. And what is that doing? There's a ball, there's a ball in here that's opening up whenever I do that. See that opening up? Now it's completely open. Now it can let fluid through. Pretty tricky, pretty tricky. Now, Can I take anything else apart here? Like I said, I'm not worried about this. There's a coolant temp sensor tucked away in there. I wonder how I can get that off. Let's take these two screws out at the top here. All right, does this come off? Would you look at that? Man, this dang old thing just keeps on going. So this, this is the coolant temp sensor in there. Now let's see if I can get, see if I can figure more stuff out. Okay, so whenever I, am I gonna be able to, man, it's hard, it's hard to get this on camera. I'm spinning this and stuff is happening inside here. Do you see this piece right here, scrolling up? Let me see if I can figure out what's actually happening. There we go. Look at, look at this. See, that's closing off. It's like a ball valve. It's completely closed now. I wonder if I keep on going if it stops. Or if it just opens back up. Yep, it's opening back up. See, it starts with a small slit. Okay, that, now it stopped. So if I were to go all the way back, it starts closing itself back off again. All right, is there anything else I can take off? I think I pretty much got this thing figured, even though it's still kind of an enigma. 
I mean, do we really need such a complex water pump? Is the thermostat that just opens and closes with temperature? Is, is that just old school now? That's just, we're just throwing that technology away for this newfangled computer junk? Tell me what you think about it all. I might have been wrong about the coolant temp sensor. This is pretty odd. It certainly looks like the tip of a coolant temp sensor like they traditionally have been, but I was able to pop this out. And it doesn't look like it's connected to anything, so this does look like it's a type of thermal type of thermostat type operating procedure dealio. So must be operated with the coolant temp sensor somewhere else. You know, I haven't, whenever I was at the dealership, I only got to replace a few of those engines. That's a separate story. So I didn't really have any experience working on them being broken. And this is just a water pump, so someone else can tell me more about this pump or what this specific thing is right here. I still learn from everybody else. I've learned a lot from the comments, so thanks for people that put information in the comment section. It helps everyone out, not just me. Until next time, Neptown Tuner. Out right here, so let's keep on finding more stuff. I wasn't able to figure out how to move this ball valve, but this is a different type of ball valve in here. Now I got it all the way apart. Interesting. Here it is. Let's see, the ball valve goes in here, and then there's gears right there. So it opens. When it's fully opened, it opens that ball valve as well through that gear assembly.